All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is Jen Bird again, and I'm here again with Ashley and Jen from the Y uh, for the NDT, NDPP group. Um, we are just doing another check-in again, um, kind of going back and revisiting some of the stuff that we learned earlier on in the program um, to help keep us motivated during this time away. Um, last week, we talked a little bit about tracking our activity, or not tracking our, about doing activity. To di this time, we're going to talk about tracking activity. Um, but uh, how, um, wow, I just kind of lost where I was going. But anyway, um, last week, we talked about track or about our activity and, and how that was going. Um, I want to check in with um, Ashley and Jen really quick and just see how has activity been going for you this past week? I know the farther that we are away from, you know, maybe our normal routine, um, sometimes we meet some glitches or um, like today is not a great day outside. It's kind of dreary, maybe impacting our motivation to do things, but how are things going for you all on um, staying motivated to be active? Pretty good, um, all things considered, right? Um, if I wasn't having to make videos for our YMCA members, I would not be active at all. So I'll be flat out honest with you there. Um, that's been a really big struggle to try to get my own personal routine going. But um, last week was kind of like my, I don't ever get rock bottom, but I was kind of having a little rocky path last week of trying to get motivated and um, kind of making some plans for myself. And so I really sat down and I just made goals that I just needed to like clock in with myself and pretend it was work um, because I'm normally getting, you know, paid to teach like six classes a day, five classes a day. So now when we do one or two videos a day, that's a completely different story. So um, I just kind of put it in my brain that I have to do these things um, before I even clock in to work. Um, just so today was day one and it was good. I, um, got it done so i know we're talking about last week but last week sucked so now this week is moving into <laughs> um so i did really good this week um so yeah just made sure that i scheduled my time in and made a plan um and i didn't want all my efforts to be wasted in making my little journal and my little workout plans that i actually wanted to kind of stick to it so we'll let you know next week if it was a success this week <laughs> stick with it past monday um but yeah yeah it was uh we're getting there, you know. Yep. Well, and that's, I mean, it's important to, you know, realize that like, it's not, doesn't have to be an all or, all or nothing either. You know, maybe we have a week where things are a little bit rough, but then um, taking that opportunity to sit down and see where you want to go and setting those goals is a good way to get back on track. Mm -hmm. Ashley, how about you? How, are th how have things been going with staying active the longer this goes on? I think it gets more mentally challenging more than anything because it's not that I don't want to work out or be active or whatever, but it's like actually finding the mental energy to make it happen, I think. And like we were kind of saying like a day like today where it's like super gloomy and it's Monday, like it doesn't make me want to do anything. Like we did a video this morning. I went for a walk. It was terrible. It was like drizzling and it was cold and I just wore a sweatshirt because it said it was 48 degrees out and I was like, oh, it's like warm. Not really when like the wind is like going through your sweatshirt and your face is like frozen, but you know, <laughs> you kind of get <laughs> like, mental, mental hurdles and just doing it and also doing different things. I've done, I don't remember if I talked about this last week, but a lot more like outdoor yard work type of things like yesterday and that's. Friday I spent a lot of time outside just working on the yard and it's like amazing how how many calories and how much work you actually like put into it like I was doing leaves and it's like picking the leaves up and then dumping them and then breaking more and then walking and by the time I was done you know you already had like 300 calories and however many steps so mm -hmm. kind of taking it as it's not the same as what it was but still finding those different activities and and new things to enjoy too, so. Yeah, that new piece is, is important, um, especially right now to not get in the same rut. I feel like when you have a routine, maybe, you know, when we think about like the Y family, for example, how 
it's always different because the workouts are still a little bit different and you're always seeing different people and catching up with them. And right now it is kind of the same old, same old. So having some new creative ways to be active is important. I know this weekend I got out and I played catch with my boys, you know, and, and that was a lot of fun. Um, just something, my arm hurts today actually from it, but, um, but it was good. It was a good change of pace for me and, and something, um, that I know that he enjoyed as well. So, um, you were talking about the mental piece too, and I want to just talk a little bit about that. Um, does anyone else notice right now, even with the physical activity that it just seems like not only getting to the point of doing the physical activity, but like getting through it. I know that's one of the things that I'm struggling with right now. I'm like, why is this so hard? I know that it shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> Maybe I'm alone, but do you guys notice that at all? I think that like for me this morning, like the first 15 minutes is kind of rough, mm -hmm. but I think too, it has to, a lot to do with like the environment. Um, I love those memes on like Pinterest and Facebook that you see where people are like suiting up in their like armor and they just feel like invincible getting ready to go to the gym. Like I think that's what the gym does. Like it totally mentally preps you for what you're gonna do while you're there and you're kind of like psyched to be there. So you're more productive and the workout's much easier to get through. But when you're at home and you roll out of bed and you don't even put on like your cute clothes, let's just be honest. Like I literally went out in my pajama shirt this morning because I it was like why well, make more laundry and went downstairs and you don't put much thought into like not that the presentation is everything but like you're like oh I have to go do this and then like the basement you know there's my cat litter boxes and my laundry and like there's all this other distraction and you try to get into it and I got into it after the first 15 minutes but until then um it was a struggle but I think it a lot has to do with like the environment too that you're as much as it's nice to be in the comfort of your own home, like I think the to-do aspect of walking into the gym, putting your clothes away in your locker, and like just mental steps to get up to that fitness room or go to that class, you're just like stoked because you know that you're gonna, you know, get a really good workout once you get there. So we don't have that now. That's been been like more of that struggle for me. But once you start, it's good. Yep. Fifteen minutes was rough. Well, and it's a lot easier, I think, to make it through the whole workout when you have other people around you. Like, I notice, like, for me, like, when we're recording a workout, like, you can't stop. You can't <laughs> limp out on it. Like, you have to finish and keep going. But then when you're, like Jen said, in the comfort of your own home and there's not really anyone else around, you're really only accountable to yourself, sometimes it's a little easier to just be like, oh, well, you know there's only one more set of whatever, or one more of this, I'll just kind of be done for the day or whatnot. Or I know I'm usually a pretty big morning person, a morning workout person. And that's even been, you know, a struggle. Like I'm not definitely not getting up as early as I normally do. <laughs> so like, like, Oh, well then if I work out before we do a video and I don't want to look terrible in the video and I don't take a shower. And then you just kind of go down this rabbit hole of like excuses. I'm like, why you shouldn't do it <laughs> but I don't know it's true how do you talk yourself okay so <laughs> as we're talking about like this mental piece what are some of the things that you tell yourself to not go down that rabbit hole or to you know Jen in your case make sure that you get past those really sucky 15 minutes like how do we how do we move past I just pretend like I just pretend like I'm still teaching and I like woohoo to myself <laughs> my cat thinks I'm crazy by now because I talk to myself like all day he did Pilates with us this morning he didn't even know what was going on um but I that's what gets me through you're still kind of like think as an instructor you're always in that zone and so it's really hard to kind of keep your mouth shut because you're so it's so ingrained in you because like you know if you're struggling then the class is and that's when you need that little boost Mm -hmm. um so for me it's like turning up that music just a little bit louder and I think I even looked at myself in the mirror today and was like you can do this <laughs> Not thing, but you know what well whatever like no one else saw me do it so. yeah. <laughs> but it helped get me through that point and I think I did look in my in the mirror quite often to see how much sweat was coming off my face because that's like this is like getting a good enough workout um that was motivating me past that point so I think the like, you're just going to have to be that mental strong. Like, how bad do you want this? You know, mm -hmm. do you want to go to the gym? 
more successful after this uh, stay at home order? Or do you want to go and lose all the gains that you've made over the last six months? Mm -hmm. um, the first month was really hard for me. So now I'm like, I want to go back to the gym and look way better than I did when I left the gym. So we'll see if it works. Yep. Close bold. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jen always jokes about how she's gonna have like her biscuit or whatever, and I was like, well, unless this goes till July, we all know who's gonna be the biggest person coming. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, well, fingers crossed, it doesn't go that far. But <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I'm glad that people are finding ways to to keep that motivation and and understanding that like giving ourselves grace you know, in general, um, but especially during this time that like, it's okay if we have a rough day, um, but don't let that take us down the whole time. Because like you said, Jen, that was a really good point about, um, you know, people have made goals or have made gains and goals, hopefully. Um, and, and, you know, whether it be adding a few minutes on to a walk that they weren't able to do before, or maybe doing a couple extra reps on something and, and it can get really easy to lose that. So if we can keep that momentum going on the things that we've already gained, um, hopefully that can be enough to kind of spark the interest and the enthusiasm to keep moving along. So, mm -hmm. um, so one of the things though with our activities that we also want to be tracking activity, um, as we know with the program, we're working um, on having 150 minutes per week of um, activity, um, moderate activity with our you know heart rate up and and um, burning some calories and making some progress that way. Um, but some of us don't know, like, how do we track our activity or what are the best ways to go about doing that? Um, I know I never really thought about that before. I'd just go out and I'd do, and I'd be like, well, I did, you know, my activity and now I'm done. Um, but having an idea of like how much I've done or the intensity on that has really helped me kind of figure out and set my goals moving forward. But, um, uh, what are some of your favorite ways that you, um, track your activity and why is it your favorite way to track your activity? So I want to hear from each of you on the things that have worked for you um, in, in that way. I laugh because I'm gonna, she's gonna laugh at me. I love post-it notes like horribly. This was my workout today so <laughs> I'm gonna put it in my journal. I love post-it notes. You just day. bought new ones. I just <laughs> bought new ones like a stack. Um, just so I could have them at home. Um, I think paper and pen is like the best thing for me. I like the, um, oh, what do I want to say? Like the progress of writing it down and feeling like I accomplished something by putting it down. I completed this and finished it. Or whether I made like a to-do list and I was able to check it off. I like the visual. Um, and it doesn't take 20 minutes to put it into your phone if you have a phone app, which those are great too, don't get me wrong. But I like just grabbing my notebook, putting it in there. And actually what I've been doing with my planning is that I plan it the night before. And so the next day, all I gotta do is put a check mark by it and that's my goal and it's done. So post-it notes are cheap mm -hmm. and pretty. <laughs> How about you, Ashley? Um, a lot of what I do now is basically my watch, um, which then will sync to my phone if I remember to do it, which a lot of times I forget to turn my watch on. So that's not super helpful. Mm -hmm. But if I do remember to turn it on, um, I do like that it has, you know, different settings and whatnot to be like, oh, it was a cardio workout. Oh, it was strength training. It was a walk, a hike, a bike ride, all those different things. And then it'll track, um, like how many calories I burned through that time or like on my walks, I kind of have it planned out like in my neighborhood, like how far I'm going. Usually I do like a, a walk up on skyline to get a nice view. And I know kind of where my turnaround mark is so that I hit about three miles by the time I get home. Um, but I also like planning. So what helps me to like actually do the activity is to use my like weekly planner and to plan the times and the days and what workouts I'm going to do when, because usually that's what we have, you know, for our classes or personal training or whatever is like, you know, what time and what you're going to be doing. And so that's helpful for me to see like, okay, I want to do these different activities this week. And then when does that work with my schedule or when, when would I like to do them? <laughs> because let's be honest, 
lot of us have more time on our hands than maybe. <laughs> so finding those like good, good intentional times to do it and not just putting it off to the end of the day when you're like, eh. Mm -hmm. So both of you talked um, a little bit about, um, you know, setting your goals and doing some planning ahead of time. What are some of the things that you keep in mind when you are setting a goal for your fitness or your activity? Like, how do you set your goal? Well, um, I want to try to be, I mean, active like six days a week and building in like one rest day just to kind of be lazy. Um, and I, I don't know with classes, they were so different because it was, you know, you were kind of structured with what you had to teach when. And so being home, I mean, I like cardio way more than strength. So I'm like doing three days of cardio, two days of strength. Um, but I'm upping my weights because Ashley says I don't lift heavy enough. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just keeping accountability by like my friends and stuff here too. Like it's kind of funny to set my goals so I can give her a hard time. Um, and honestly, I don't have a lot of lightweights at home, but, um, so I'm just trying to be like diverse and like what we're doing. And if we have like a Pilates or a yoga video plan to record for the Y, then like, I'm obviously going to offset that with, you know, a little bit of cardio and some weights, but we've talked before in some of our other wellness videos that are also on our Facebook page about, um, like we like to do like full body so it's you know some cardio with some strength and some core like all wrapped into one hour because those are kind of like the classes that we teach so it's kind of what we're used to um so even just doing smaller things like that five days a week is kind of how I plan and I just want to do stuff that I like too so or I miss from the gym I did bring drumsticks home so I could do my drumming class if I wanted to I have yet to do it but you know month two might be the month for me but, so. but you will <laughs> Yeah. Great. So um, what I'm hearing kind of with you is that you're, you're picking like ver variety for one thing is one of your goals so that you're not doing the same thing over and over. Um, and then you're also picking or you're setting goals with things like weights. So be being able to like increase, you know, at a, at a certain amount or whatever. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Ashley, how about you? What are some things that you keep in mind when you're setting your goals? I think always thinking of things that can be, you know, measured and achievable within, you know, a certain period of time that I'm trying to look forward to. Um, growing up with like figure skating and coaching that we always had smart goals, which I don't know if people still do those. I can't think of what all the, the acronym is, but specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like ingrained in my brain. Like I said, I don't like necessarily think or know of those exact words, but mm -hmm. I think just having had that like as a process, like through my teen years, and it's just kind of natural for me to think about those types of things when I'm, you know, trying to set a goal. Because I think for everybody, it's pretty discouraging when you set a goal that is either not measurable or not achievable, and that's discouraging you from whether that's continuing activity or, you know, a weight goal that you set or other things that are a little bit more, um, I don't know, just discouraging when you don't really set those realistic goals that you can check off and accomplish. So I think for me, I like setting smaller goals for myself and maybe they lead up to a big goal, maybe they don't. But even if I have like a big goal, say like, I don't know, one thing I think of is like races and stuff like you have to set smaller things you can't just be like oh I'm gonna go run a marathon in two weeks and not do like and not have any smaller goals before that like that's just not gonna end well for you <laughs> and so taking those smaller steps like oh I'm gonna train and I'm gonna do this so that I can get to this big end goal and for me right now my <laughs> I don't know how to my goals are pretty much to stay like where I am and not lose anything because I know like at the point that I'm at like with pregnancy and things like that is like I am not going to be able to do certain things and that's okay um mm -hmm. but like being in the best shape I can for like labor and afterwards um and then I'll have different goals after the baby's born for sure but right now it's kind of like maintain and you know try to keep good level of fitness right now 
Well, you're being realistic and healthy with, with your approach to things. So, um, and I'm glad that you brought up the SMART goals because that's something that we do talk about too with, with our, you know, program is this idea of our goals when we set them, whether it's about, you know, recently we've been talking about um, our activity and our tracking our activity, but it also applies to when we're setting stuff with our food and, and our weight in general. Um, but having them be realistic. So, you know, to say, oh, I'm going to give myself a week to, you know, run a 5k if I've never ran is probably not a good idea. Um, not to say that somebody couldn't do it, but it's not probably going to be sustainable because after that, somebody will probably never want to run again. Um, being, you know, um, specific. So, you know, when you were talking about Jen, I, I want to make sure that I have six days of activity, right? And so mm -hmm. that's something that's specific because you can look and you can say, did I have six days of activity? I had three days of cardio, two days of my, um, the strength training, and then maybe, you know, a day of like stretching or something like that. Um, so having those things where we can numerically do it, or maybe it's even adding on to that, I'm going to have six days of at least 10 minutes per day or, you know, whatever that is for each individual person. And then being flexible because Ashley, like you mentioned, some days, um, you know, our days don't go exactly how we planned. And if I didn't get my time in today, maybe there's another day that I could add on, or maybe I don't have a solid chunk of 30 minutes to do an activity that day, but I could break it up into 10 minute segments because I have 10 minutes. So there's a lot of different things that we can keep in mind um, that can help us with our tracking too, because if we have our goals set and, and everything, then our tracking is going to be a lot easier for us because we understand what we're working towards. Mm -hmm. um, with the, the tracking activity too, I know you guys mentioned some of your favorites, like writing down things on, you know, paper. Um, and uh, Ashley, you mentioned using your phone. There's also a lot of other different apps that we can use, whether it be on our phone or a watch or on the computer. Um, the paper logs, we have those available as well. So if you are, as a participant, if you're like, I don't know where to, to mark this down or how to mark it, um, we can give you a template or I think we gave you some before, but we have those available too. So just reach out to us and let us know um, because we're more than happy to share those as an option too. Um, and just getting in the habit of maybe setting that goal of maybe your goal this week is that I'm going to start tracking better. I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to spend five minutes at the end of the day writing down the things that I did. And then eventually maybe adding in some things like um, how much time you're spending on it or what specifically you did for an activity um, or um, a distance that you went or things like that. So there's a lot of different ways that we can track. Um, some things automatically track for us, treadmills, bikes or stationary bikes, watches, um, ellipticals, if you have any of those types of things, you can take the information right off there. Like I went one mile, I spent 15 minutes and I burned 200 calories. You know, all of that stuff can be, um, tracked. What we're mainly looking for is the, is the minutes tracked right now. Um, but some of those other mechanisms can help you set some of your goals for activity too. Um, I want to just toss it back out to Jen and Ashley too. Is there anything like in this tracking piece that you can give advice on to some of our NDP P folks? Um, I know you talked about your favorite ways, but anything that helped you get in the habit of tracking? Consistency is huge. I think, um, you know, when we can stick with it for that first week and then you notice that you have success, the second week sometimes it's harder to keep up that consistency because you're like, oh, well, I lost some weight or I did really good this week. And then you kind of, get, oh, maybe I can just remember to do it on my own. And there's really no accountability unless you're writing it down, um, you know, three weeks to kind of build that habit. So 21 days, um, that's kind of a long time to be building it in. And I know I struggle. I do really good for the first week and then I get some success. I lose some weight. I feel good about it. And then the weekend comes and then you have a rest day and you're like, Oh, I don't really need to log anything today. Or I ate something I shouldn't have, or I didn't work out. So I don't want to write it down because then it makes you feel bad because there's your accountability mm -hmm. and then it comes around and it's just that snowball effect. Um, so consistency, just keep doing it. Even write down the things that you didn't do to kind of, I don't want to say like, 
self-shame, but um, just to kind of keep you in that right direction, um, you know, accept the fact that maybe you didn't do it that day. Don't be so hard on yourself, but then also be aware of it so that the next day, it's a new day. You can start fresh. You can throw off the whole week, the whole month. It's just a day. And I wouldn't even say you threw off the whole day. If you forgot to write down your food for breakfast or didn't get your workout in in the morning, you still have time in the afternoon. You still have time in the evening, like make it happen. Um, and just stay with it. Consistency is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, making some time, even if it's two minutes, just to jot something down to start getting in that, in that habit. Mm -hmm. Ashley, do you have any parting comments? Um, I think just going along with the consistency is making making it and making yourself a priority. And um, like you said, taking those couple minutes to write those things down and seeing that as important and valuing that not only, you know, to meet your goals, but just valuing, you know, what you're doing and, and yourself, I think, along the process and realizing that that's more important or is as important as other things maybe in your life that are ever moving and changing, but like, you know, really taking, even if it's only a few minutes, like you said, to, to really prioritize that and make it, um, make it about yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. We are all worthy of, of self-care and part of self-care is making sure that we're taking care of our body. We only have one of them. So we need to do our best right now to, to make sure that it can stick with us for quite, the, quite a long time. Um, I, I think one of the things too with tracking activity and the consistency piece is having those goals. And I think part of that is sharing your goals. And so um, I know that when I share my goals with other people, I also am more accountable. So I'm going to challenge everybody this week to, to let us know what some of your activity goals are and um, some of the ways in which you like to track your activities, because somebody else might be really struggling with like, how do I even get started? And if you have made some progress or you're like, I'm just going to set a goal and I'm going to go with it. Um, put it in the comments on, on the Facebook page. So that's my challenge to you this week. Let us know some of your fitness goals or your activity goals for the week. Um, and then also let us know your favorite way of keeping track of your activity. Um, the more, the merrier, the, the more ideas um, we can learn from each other. I think it's a great community and uh, we can hopefully continue to make progress towards all of our goals together. So um, I think that's all we have for this week. Um, we will be back again next week. So check the Facebook page. Um, keep us posted. Post questions, post ideas, share with each other. This is your community. Use it in this time until we can come back together. So have a wonderful week and we will see you next time.